see you all here. Um, it's a beautiful morning on May the 2nd, and um, it's 2015. And it's time for changes to take place. And I think they will, because all of you are here, and this is the first time an event like this has ever brought together people who are professionals who work with infants and toddlers all the way through high school up into college. And, um, and I want to thank all the staff here at 21 Acres and uh, Deb Sternagel, I think that's how you pronounce her name, Sternagel. Sternagel. And she is a child advocate and, and the administrator here. And Jane McClure, the event coordinator. And I want to thank a few other people. Um, Marianne Johnston, who is here giving star credits to people who are attending for the early educators. And, um, and to Roxanne Trees, Seattle Public School and Learning Consumer Sciences representative who is giving you your block hours for coming today. Um, she has arranged, both of these women have arranged for this. I want to thank Carl Slater, who is here, who will be filming this event um, for all those who were not able to attend. And this workshop is uh, on, about social emotional learning. And that brings us together with feelings and food and family and friends. I want to introduce Karen here, who's going to tell you about this building a little bit and, and um, get you oriented to the space. And Karen? Hi, everybody. I'm going to try to project since we don't have a sound system set up yet. You can hear me in the back? I'll talk loud. Can you hear me behind the poles? <laughs> okay. Um, I work as a guest staff here, and I work with cooking classes and kitchen assistant, and I'm sort of like the, the person who does all the underlying stuff, and I've been here four and a half years, so I have a lot of practical knowledge. We have Matt, who's going to tell you a lot of really brainiac knowledge. So what I'm going to talk about, first of all, is that we are an environmental learning center, the idea being that we are kind of a living lab of the things that we use as our stock and trade, which are local, organic, and sustainable. We use it in all our cleaners. We use it in all our environmental things. The only time you'll see something that doesn't fit in that is if, by law, we have to have certain things that there's no source for out of the local organic sustainable community yet. And then there may be someday, but there may not be yet. So you might see plastic used for something that we have no alternatives for, but we have to have it. So um, the main thing that Gail asked me to talk about was our compostable toilets, because they're a little unusual. And we, you know, it's a kind of an odd subject to introduce, but um, our bathrooms are upstairs. You go through the elevator, we you might go to the right, across the lobby. And the first door on the left is the men's room. Then you go around the corner and down the hall a little bit. And then on the left, you'll see the ladies' room. In the bathrooms, there are privacy stalls. The toilets look semi-normal. Um, on the back is a stainless steel box, and there's a button that says push. And you push that button, or flush, or push it, it'll be an organic soap. It looks like bubble soap, and it will run down the sides of the commode bowl, and that kind of soaps it up. It's a biodigester soap. Then you do your business, and then you push the button again, and then more soap goes down. And the joy of these, in that, it's three ounces of water that we use per use of the toilet, as opposed to 1.6 gallons or older toilets that are up to five gallons per flush. So we use three ounces. The digested solids of this eventually turn into compost, which we use on plants and things. It's legal in this state to use it on food crops. So you don't have to worry about what you're eating. It's, it's not used on that, but we've got lots of lovely bushes and things that need to be fertilized as well. Um, if there's anything wrong in one of the bathrooms, just if someone like me who's dressed in black, just give a holler. Somehow it's run out of paper or towels or soap in the dispenser. Um, did you want me to talk about a little bit of buffet lunch? Okay, but I talked to our chefs, so I have the exact details. We have four types of sandwiches. We have roast beef, egg salad, Thai curry chicken, and mushroom lentil sliders. 
We have a multi-grain salad, and they are made from oat groats, which are you know unprocessed oats, barley, lentils, greens, and different vegetables. And I'm not sure which vegetables, but they'll be visible. We're having a mixed fruit cobbler for dessert, and that has a crusted top, which is basically flour, egg, baking powder, and butter. The scones and muffins we had today, the scones were cranberry, the muffins were blueberry or apple cranberry. We do have a treat, our other dessert, and for our school free folks. We have garbanzo bean brownies. So Eileen gets first choice in the brownies because she won't be able to eat a lot of the other stuff. <laughs> no, you can eat the filling though, unless you're, are you CDF? Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so, our food that's in these foods is all locally sourced, locally grown organically. Some of it we grow on our own farm, but we buy from buyers, you know, from sellers that you know, within about a hundred mile radius. So the food is all made from scratch. We don't have a can opener. We don't have a microwave. So we have a very different way of dealing with it, and it's, it's an adventure as a staff person to watch how creative these cooks are. So I think you're going to like the food. Thank you, Karen. Can I explain that a little bit? Um, quickly. Okay, <laughs> one second. We're going to set it up as a buffet. We're going to have staff people behind. We're going to say, ask you to say, oh, I would like a roast beef sandwich, which we'll put on your plate. Um, we'll scoop you some salad. The desserts are self-served. We want to be sure everybody has some. So that's the bottom line. So we will have it set up when it's lunchtime. Thank you. You betcha. And have a good time. Well, I'd like to be able to just add that, that I'm going to read my notes because they're helpful and I'm going to be quick about it. Um, I want to thank you all for being here. Mm -hmm. We have a large group of family and consumer sciences teachers who I'm sure will enjoy the food that's here and the second speaker who's going to be talking on nutrition and there's a lot to learn on that. Um, we come together today to learn about the research of Dr. Christopher Sink of Seattle Public, uh, Seattle Pacific University. And welcome our guest speaker and co-developer of the Happiness Project, David Hartman. And afterward, we're going to have a walking tour of the environment led by our second speaker, Matt Keen, on the subject of nutrition and its effect on the mind. We come together today as mothers, and fathers, and grandparents, and students, educators, and scientists to combine our energies and be inspired. I believe we share a passionate love and care for the children and this earth. And the children come to us eager to learn how to live in a state of happiness. We recognize it's a formidable goal to help the delicate work of human formation, and we meet up with the psychological mysteries of the developing mind and spirit. Dr. Maria Montessori advised educators to consider the formation of man as the basis of education and coordinate schools from infancy to maturity, from nursery to university, as a first necessity for each person is an individual that passes through interdependent phases of development and each preceding phase prepares for the one that follows its base. It nurtures energies that urge us toward the succeeding period of life. And we today represent all those phases of life unfolding. And this is an opportunity for us to connect as professionals. And today we'll begin by welcoming David Hartman, who's going to give his presentation on how the research on the Happiness Project is touching lives in our state and all around the globe. This is a time where we look for a focus, it seems in our, in our culture today, we're just focusing on all the discontentment. But today we're going to focus on happiness. And David will tell us how to begin. Thank you. 